Hey traders, checking into the stock market today. So we had the bulls break our resistance overnight on the futures chart, which was step number one of gaining some shorter term uptrends. From there, we saw some healthy consolidation through the morning, not surprising as we saw big gap ups on a lot of names. And then a battle at the end of the day and the bulls won that battle. But we'll go through the details a bit more. So let's zoom in. So we zoomed in and we had the bears control the open. Five minute downtrend. We pretty much double topped, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We got pretty extended, but five and 15 minute oversold conditions did mark the low of the day. From there, we had a bounce and we knew to be scouting for that bounce. Why? Because after all that consolidation, we were just looking for hourly higher lows. And so I started the morning in timeout in my trading because yesterday, one of the mistakes in my trading was trading too early. My results show me that I am a better trader 10.30 a.m. to noon than I am 9.30 to 10. And so I was waiting, essentially saying, all right, I'm going to force myself to wait for the open, which is a bit unfortunate because we had really nice bear entries where essentially the trade that I took yesterday that failed would have worked out really well this morning. Netflix had a double top at 250. We pulled back from that level first thing and ended up pulling back 5%. After hours, we got a Netflix bullish earnings reaction, and Netflix is back into gap-filled territory at the highest prices that we've seen in many months. There's gap-filled to 333. So a lot of space to move around, but a bullish reaction to Netflix. CGC was another name. We rejected from the high of yesterday, first thing, to the penny, and then rolled over and very quickly, through the morning, ended up down 7% from that double top. So there were some nice top fishing plays, but... I showed discipline by not trading them. And we were then in a downtrend. So, okay, if I'm going to miss the bear move on the morning because I'm in timeout, then I'm going to scout hourly higher lows on the stronger names. So I was looking at Amazon saying, okay, Amazon hourly pullback is underway, but anything above the low of yesterday is an hourly higher low. So I know I am scouting an hourly higher low to be the result of that consolidation. We then zoom in and we look for details on the five minute time frame that show us that the hourly higher low is being set. Amazon was a back burner. Look at the five minute RSI. We got right to 30 and hitting five minute oversold marked the hourly higher low. And we end up bouncing a nice 2%, just under 2% from that level. I missed that bounce because I was a bit distracted with life stuff. I had a meeting. I was typing answer to a question. Essentially, I was looking for a five minute higher low entry right here. And as I was typing out some details of a trade, we end up getting the bull move and I missed it. So it was frustrating because at that point in the morning, it's like, man, I have been really on point with my technical analysis as far as how the five minute and the hourly are relating to each other and what the most likely scenarios are. And I had nothing to show for it. At that point in time, I had a couple, you know, 10% day makers from just little scalps, but I stuck with it because generally it's, the clarity on all these time frames that lead to my flow state. Sweetie pants coming in hot. So if if I'm on point with my time frames and I know I'm looking for this and I'm looking for this time frame to shape it up, I just gotta stick with it. So after that bounce, I knew to be scouting for hourly lower highs because the size of the pullback on these bounces or on these initial drops was enough to create a lot of space for hourly lower highs to form. So I decided to choose QQQ. And I'm watching the five minute uptrend on QQQ as my guide. And I am looking at, I was actually on the 15 minute time frame at this point, low, high, higher, low. And I'm watching to see, okay, can the bulls confirm the 15 minute trend change? And I watched SPY confirm the 15 minute trend change a bit earlier with no follow through as QQQ rejected. So I then said, okay, I personally would like to see QQQ break that 15 minute level to confirm the 15 minute uptrend with no follow through for my initial scale into SQQQ scouting the hourly lower high. And so this was the resistance level that I'm talking about. How do I recognize no follow through? Let's zoom in. There's our resistance break. How long did it last? We broke it for one minute and the next two minute candle is a solid red one. Now I can't look at that and say, we're about to top out but I can look at that and say the probabilities just increased that we're going to top out because if we were going to see follow through, it would be a two minute stair step move on the way up for another three candles. 
but it was a break straight into consolidation, which tells me make an initial bearish entry, which I did. We then lucked out with Apple production news timed really nicely for all these bearish hourly lower highs. And I then exited some of that position at the low of the day as the bulls essentially held it. And then I exited the rest into the end of the day knowing I didn't want to gamble on earnings. So in the end, it was a decent trade, but the bulls played defense and they held on. And we were on the verge of confirming an hourly downtrend. And we know an hourly downtrend confirming would be the first indication that a daily lower high was being set. Because anything under 284.18 for QQQ is just a daily lower high. But bulls played defense. So good save by the bulls. This bounce is going to have to confirm a daily trend change eventually with a higher low and higher high. We have not seen the S&P 500 and NASDAQ give us daily uptrends since we topped out two months ago. So that's what's going to say this time is different if that's going to happen. SPY resistance 379.46. We're up after hours thanks to Netflix. So it's the high of today and then 379.46. There's two ways this is going to play out. We're going to break daily lower high resistance and then need to confirm the daily trend change or we're going to reject from daily lower high resistance and try and set up the inverse head and shoulders. The hourly uptrend is our guide for when the daily lower high is being set. The futures charts are giving us potential rising wedges to keep an eye on. These are just some visual guides I'm watching. Uptrend support line, uptrending resistance line. I'm watching this. What will make me increase the probability significantly that this is a valid pattern would be if we break the high of today tomorrow with no follow through, because that's what a rising wedge is, breaks of resistance with no follow through. So keeping an eye on that, but also making note, all right, bulls, congrats. You kept control today. We were on the verge of bears taking over. You played defense and now you got Netflix help with some earnings, some bullish earnings reactions. So I have no idea how I'm gonna trade heading into tomorrow but I'm fairly flat. I am flat overnight with no directional exposure. I know that I'm scouting daily consolidation to be the result of this bounce, but I also know it may take a few days for that to shape up. So I'm certainly not scouting it aggressively. The dollar, still looking for a daily higher low compared to 110.05, no sign of it. Fairly sideways day overall. High, low, lower high, just an equilibrium on the hourly at this point. SMH is still weak. Daily EMA 12 resistance rejection. We're up a little bit after hours, but nothing notable. And again, you compare, we can compare all these individual names and sectors. Names that are breaking the high from early October are clearly stronger. And a name like this, like let's just compare. Let's go to healthcare. So here's healthcare. How does healthcare look? Stronger. We broke this high. The daily lower high resistance has been broken. Is SMH breaking the daily lower high? Well, we need another 15% to even get close. It's not even in the, on the table. So that's how we can quickly, at a glance, gauge who's stronger and who's weaker. SMH is nowhere near changing the daily trend. It's a potential bear flag still. But XLV, granted, we still need the daily trend change eventually, but we've got a lot of space for it to form now. We've seen a notable bounce off the lows of 6.5%. When we lose the hourly uptrend, we scout a daily higher low. The bulls regaining the hourly uptrend is the first indication the daily higher low is being set. And then we watch to see, can the bulls confirm a daily uptrend? XLF, same thing. We broke resistance. Great start. Plenty of space to scout the daily high or low. And then we need to look for a daily trend change attempt. Patient bulls at this point, wanting swing positions, are waiting for the next period of daily consolidation to make those entries. To look for that daily high or low to try and set up the trend change. IWM broke 176.17. Still need to confirm a daily trend change if we're going to believe that this bounce can have follow through. But it's a good start. Getting to the highest price in almost a month at this point. Biotech sector failed to break 83.51 initially, so still range bound. If we break the low of today before breaking 83.51, this daily equilibrium will continue to tighten. Energy, volatility is coming here. Look how tight we're getting. 
So we had a bull break on the daily with zero follow through, pretty much a double top, call that a triple top. We've got support and we are fairly sideways here. So bulls have a bit of favor in the energy sector. Why do I say that? Because oil has been pulling back notably and has, is still struggling to set a daily higher low. I'm looking at CLZ now, the December futures contract, but we retraced over 50%, which means an equilibrium becomes the more likely scenario. But I can look at XLE and say the XLE bulls are positioned well if oil can set a daily higher low. And XLE is also positioned well, considering natural gas is extremely weak. Natural gas is daily oversold. It's down almost 50%. We're down 45% from a couple months ago. And we're heading towards 528 support. But we're in a downtrend on every time frame still. Party is over for natural gas, certainly for the time being. But again, considering how weak these commodities are, Energy is holding up well. Energy is well off its recent low, and it's actually testing the highest levels in four months. And that all-time high is in play as well. All-time high adjusted for dividends. Cannabis. So again, another sector. I always want to know who relative bulls and bears are. Because if I'm looking for daily consolidation in the broader market, I want to look for a name like CGC. You know, what's the most likely result of this CGC bounce? A daily lower high. I can't look at Apple and say the most likely result is a daily lower high. It's still possible to set a daily lower high, but that resistance is right there. We can just as easily break it as some of our major sectors have already done. CGC is not going to break daily resistance on this bounce without massive news. So I would much rather be scouting. I'm much more confident in my ability to scout a daily lower high on a weaker name than on a stronger name. So every day I'm watching CGC for a bear trade. Today gave another one. Yesterday gave one as well. Yesterday was the news pump that faded and gave it all back. Today was the double top with a significant opportunity. Eventually we're gonna set a daily lower high and pull back 10% from that daily lower high. It's just a question of when. So I'm watching for it. Gold miners, let's look at silver. Did silver confirm the four hour uptrend? No, just sideways. Gold has not confirmed the four hour uptrend. So miners sideways, but watching for a daily bounce to try and shape up. It's clear that gold is lagging. Gold is not following strength of stocks. Gold is not following the weakness in the dollar the last few days, gold and silver. So the metals are not participating inversely to the dollar and directly correlated to stocks as bulls would have hoped. Doesn't mean they can't play catch up, but we could say that this week so far, the metals have disappointed bulls in how they are responding to what is going on elsewhere in the market. Tesla earnings tomorrow. Again, Netflix earnings are giving Amazon a little bit of a boost after hours. I head up to the high of the day. Roku's got a big boost in response. Disney, big boost. So all related names are up. We'll see what Tesla does tomorrow. But overall, the way I'm viewing the market is bulls have short-term control, daily bounce still underway, but the daily trend change must occur if we're going to believe in follow through. And so I'm keeping an eye out for daily consolidation on a daily basis. Again, not aggressively because I know it doesn't have to be today. It doesn't have to be tomorrow, but watching for it. And then interested in watching for bullish entries for daily higher lows once we do top out. And I'll be looking on the stronger names for those daily higher lows. So one day at a time, as we watch for clarity, and again, watching for the possibility that the dollar daily higher low compared to 110.05 may coincide with the broader market pulling back into daily consolidation. Watching for a daily higher low in the VIX as well compared to 28.50. Hope you had a good day. Let's learn how to plant garlic. Don't forget to do good things. All right, it's planting garlic time. We're gonna clear this bed out with a scuttle hoe is step number one. This is where all the sunflowers were this year. So we take all the biggest garlic heads from last year and use them as seed. Maybe that's 10% and they'll give us more exponential gains. 
gonna put some fresh soil in here from the compost pile that's been sitting for three years. Forget gold and silver, this is my black gold in here. These are some volunteer potatoes still growing, but I'll show you what the goods looks like. This stuff is way more valuable than physical metals.